Louis Nastro, Director of Land Products for Planix Corporation. So Louis, what is Planix? Planix is, um, we manufacture a GPS INS system. So basically it's a tightly coupled inertial GPS system that allows the vehicle to still operate in the absence of GPS. But more importantly, we provide orientation of all the sensors so that we interpret and make sense of what those sensors are really seeing in real time. Without the orientation, sensors really can't do their jobs properly, basically. Well, let's go back to the first part, because sometimes my cell phone won't work. It doesn't get right. any signal at all. You're saying even without a signal, this thing will work. Absolutely. So what we do is we have an inertial measurement unit on board, which is an accelerometer, three accelerometers and three gyroscopes that basically solve for Newton's laws of motion. And when we have an absence of GPS signal, we can still continue to track very reliably and very accurately for very long periods of time. And what we have very, um, no, that's basically um, the spinning laser system that provides situational awareness for the vehicle. What we do is we provide robust positioning and orientation for the, uh, the robot. And in the absence of GPS, we continue to track it forward. But we also govern the vehicle dynamics on board the system. So if uh, Junior is going somewhere, we basically know exactly how fast it should be going. And the inertial unit is basically giving it at 200 times a second, very reliable measurements of what it should be doing. And uh, how much of, how, how important is that? Were you on the 2005 uh, VW Touareg? No, we were not. Um, the 2005 Grand Challenge basically needed a robot to sense the environment and basically do basic navigation. Um, actually, Sebastian's team basically made their own type of a planning system. However, it was a pretty GPS benign environment. Here, for example, we've got clear skies and there's no problems. However, when you're in an urban environment, that's where the Aplanic system shines. In the absence of GPS, we've always been asking for an actually an urban grand challenge, so they would actually put the system through its paces. And does it have, does it sense GPS 360 degrees around? Yeah, it sees whatever satellites um, it can see. Uh, we can reliably track data down to one or two satellites because with a normal GPS receiver, you need at least four satellites to get a good lock. But with the way we do our architecture and the proprietary algorithms on board the system, we can track down to one or two. And if in the total absence of GPS, we can dead reckon for incredibly long periods of time very accurately. Are you the only GPS system that does that? No. There are several competitors of ours. Some of them actually represented in the uh, in the Grand Challenge. And are you, uh, are you in any cars that we know of right now? Yes, we are in uh, Stan, or, uh, we're in Junior, and we're also with the Carnegie Mellon team. Oh, and, and what about cars we can buy? Oh, cars we cars you can buy. Unfortunately, they're a little too expensive right now. But uh, hopefully, with the advent of uh, adaptive driver assistance systems and uh, the car manufacturers trying to continue on the work that we're trying to do here in terms of saving lives on the street, they know that accurate position and orientation is uh, is is essential to providing that task. So. What we are trying to do is basically bring the technology in at a price point that would actually make sense for mass deployment. We're still a ways away, but we want to get going on that work right away. Do you work with the military then a lot? Uh, we don't really work with the military a lot. There are certain applications, just like any uh, technology, there are dual use implications. Um, so we're more on the civilian side and we've aligned with this team uh, basically because we have the same type of uh, goals in mind as to save lives on the streets. Lewis, thank you very much. Thank you.